We are two weeks from the Iowa Republican caucuses. They will be the first test of Donald Trump's continued hold on Republican voters and the lead up to a likely rematch of the 2020 election that will determine the future of American democracy. And while Americans don't agree on many things, as the Associated Press notes, recent polls show that most Americans do not want a Biden-Trump rematch. And yet, they're probably going to get one since there effectively is no Democratic primary with President Biden as the incumbent and the state parties lining up behind him. And Donald Trump is still the front runner among Republicans. And any attempt by his rivals to sell themselves as reasonable alternatives are going even further down the tubes. Case in point, last week, when former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley refused to name slavery as the cause of the Civil War, a war launched by the secession of South Carolina, over slavery. Haley capped off the holiday week with her clearest answer yet about how she'd use her pardon power if she became president, with Ron DeSantis following suit. I would pardon Trump. A leader needs to think about what's in the best interest of the country. What's in the best interest of the country is not to have an 80-year-old man sitting in jail that continues to divide our country. Well, I've already said that a long ago. I mean, I think we got to move on as a country. And, um, you know, it's like, like Ford had the, did the Nixon because you, you just, you know, the divisions are just um, not in the country's interest. Joining me now is Jelani Cobb, dean of the Columbia Journalism School and staff writer for The New Yorker. And David Jolly, MSNBC political analyst and former Republican congressman who is no longer affiliated with that party. Thank you both for being here. Uh, so much to talk about about Nikki Haley. I do want to start with the pardon piece of it first, though, David, um, because, you know, the current president, Joe Biden, is an 80 year old man and Donald Trump's probably would be attorney general says he's going to prosecute him and throw him in prison. So I wonder if Nikki Haley believes yeah. that that applies to Joe Biden or if it means you can't throw one specific 80 year old man in prison. Yeah, Joy, the bad faith and hypocrisy from Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis is remarkable. Their their willingness, their pronouncement that they will prejudge this case and prejudge the ultimate outcome for Donald Trump. Look, Ron DeSantis, he has suggested doing the same thing with migrants at the border, that border agents should be able to prejudge what's in the backpack and use deadly force against migrants from Central America. So for Donald Trump, he's prejudged it to say, no, I'm going to let the old man out of jail, no problem. I'd be curious to say to Nikki Haley and, and Ron DeSantis, what about Hunter Biden? They're very divisive. That, might, that would be a very divisive conviction. I'm sure they mm. would feel so uh, empathetic for the divide in the country on that issue as well. Obviously, I joke, but what it shows is a complete lack of leadership. And I think it also shows why there has not really been a Republican primary to speak of, because there is no daylight, not just on confronting Donald Trump on criminality, but actually now just going along with it. And then when you bring in the issue of race and other policy matters, zero contrast between Haley, DeSantis and Trump. It explains Trump's 40 point lead. I do want to write, and, and since Jelani, you are you are you are you are our history, historian of record here, uh, and so I want to give this one to you. I just want to remind folks, and I know that we did uh, the my wonderful fill in last week uh, did this on the show, but I just want to replay once again what Nikki Haley had to say about the Civil War, and I want y'all to keep in mind as she's speaking, she was the governor of South Carolina. What was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? Thank you. And in, in the year 2023, it's astonishing to me that you answer that question without mentioning the word slavery. What do you want me to say about slavery? No, um, uh, you've answered my question. Thank you. Next question. What is that performance? This woman was governor of the state where the Civil War began because they seceded over slavery. Well, the interesting thing about this is that, you know, in fact, that person did ask an easy question. Yeah. It was a very straightforward question. Uh, and should there be any doubt, you simply have to look at the Articles of Secession drafted by the South Carolina legislature in which they state explicitly that they are leaving the union in order to protect the institution of slavery. Uh, it, it's not, you know, uh, for all of the um, complexity and, uh, you know, kind of uh, 
uh, pseudo, uh, uh, you know, vague, uh, opaque kinds of, of, <laughs> of rhetoric that she used. It was a very straightforward, and the people living at the time were clear about why they were doing what they did. Now, the other part of this is that the calculation that's being made is whether you can actually say that in front of an electorate that actually does not believe well, what slavery, the kind of a la carte reality uh, version of this, where people just believe whatever they want, whatever makes them feel good, uh, is what they believe. And so you can't say that to that electorate uh, and uh, and not pay a consequence for it. I think that the calculation is political, certainly not historical. Yeah, and, and by the way, Nikki Haley was a big supporter of the Confederate flag right up until the moment she had to sign the legislation that some Democrats passed, taking it down because of what happened, uh, the massacre in Charleston, so politically, and also there were some foreign car makers that were like, we're leaving if you don't do it. You know, Ron DeSantis played along with that, David Jolly. He said, he called what um, her answer incomprehensible word salad and said that Haley had some problems with some basic American history, but... Eh. You know, Ron DeSantis, when he was a high school history teacher, taught slavery exactly the way Nikki Haley said it. He was known for having minimized the role of slavery in, this, in, uh, in, in the Civil War. And he passed a law in which he, they're teaching in Florida that slavery was good for the blacks because it gave them job skills. So it's not like it's just her. He thinks that he can own her. He believes yeah. the same thing, or at least he says he does. Joy, it is so unsettling to watch Nikki Haley in that exchange and to see her additional exchanges where she there's always a but, but, but or a caveat. And I will say I'm, I'm a contemporary of Nikki Haley's in age, also a child of the South. And, and I know the experience of getting exposed, almost indoctrinated at times, to the argument that the Civil War was about states' rights. But eventually, as you mature and as your brain matures and your heart and soul matures, you realize what a bad faith argument that is that you've been exposed to. That yes, it was about a state's rights, the state's rights to engage and permit human slavery. And ultimately, Correct. you reconcile that and realize the Civil War was about slavery. And I think what is so unsettling is to see Nikki Haley at 51 years old asking to be president of the United St States still trying to equivocate and attend to both of the constituencies of that debate. There, there is no both sidism to this. It is about yeah. slavery. And I think on, on drawing a contrast with Donald Trump, the one thing we probably didn't expect is that they would go down this road of offending the electorate on issues of race just like Donald Trump did. And that's where there's no daylight now. Uh, yeah, and Rhonda, again, Rhonda Sands is no better. I do want to just pivot to another thing, because there's another thing happening, Jelani. There, there is this sort of open war on black progress, black history. Um, Claudine Gay, the president uh, of Harvard University, at least up until she resigned, um, is now the latest casualty of that. Christopher Rufo, um, who is out there touting and, you know, high-fiving and claiming the scalp of Claudine Gay, Telegraph that this was what they were going to do, that they were going to associate um, these DEI professors of colleges with BLM and decolonization and Hamas in the public mind and get rid of them. He's now claiming victory. He telegraphed that this was the campaign. Why are these elite colleges capitulating to it and essentially making it so uncomfortable for these women leaders that they have to step down to be replaced by white men? Because that is the goal well, I mean, of Christopher Rufo and his gang. The same thing, you know, we saw the same thing with critical race theory, uh, where, again, he telegraphed and said that, you know, he was going to associate that term um, with every negative connotation uh, that people could imagine, uh, irrespective of what the term actually represented, you know, a very specific uh, and particular body of legal scholarship uh, around the, the efficaciousness of, of civil rights litigation. You know, uh, you know, very highly particular kinds of, of uh, scholarly inquiry. Uh, but by the time he was done, you know, it was kind of Cold War, uh, McCarthyite level uh, hysteria. Uh, and so the same thing, they're running the same playbook, uh, except yeah. now we have kind of individuals that are being attached to it. Uh, and, you know, uh, for, the, for the record, you know, when we saw Elise uh, Stefanik, Representative Stefanik, mm -hmm. tweet, uh, that she would always deliver yeah. uh, in the, yeah. the, the aftermath of the resignation. It was like, was that something you campaigned on? Was that yeah. your district wanted? Like, we, we voted for you in order for you to dispatch the president of Harvard University? Uh, so this is pure, pure culture warfare here uh, in the guise yeah. of, uh, of, of intellectual uh, inquiry and, and you know, ethical concern.
Yeah, and there's no intellectual inquiry about it. They're just trying to take out any woman or person of color who leads elite universities so they can give them to the people they prefer, which is the guys used to have in the 50s. Uh, Jelani Cobb, that is me saying that, not you. Jelani Cobb, thank you. David Jolly, thank you.